Oh, oh, boy, oh, TV. They scared, but I'm not. They don't like comentario. Y suscribe. If you are a child out there, if you are an aspiring hooper out there, if you are a lover of the game out there, that was a master class on how to play defense. I don't like comparing anything to that Ravens defense from over 20 years ago. I don't like ever compare it. That's how I am. I wouldn't say prideful. It wasn't like I was a Ravens fan or ever have been, but I am defensive of the status of what that team was. Like, I don't want anything to ever be compared to them because the best thing you could have said when you watched them every week, you were like, and again, I wasn't watching every Ravens game every time during that week, but during that run towards the end of the year, you're like, it feels like they have 13 guys on defense. This is insane. And when Reggie Miller was like, it looks like they have seven guys. That's what it felt like. Because when you caught the ball, there was someone else there. When you got it on a handoff and turned to cut, there was someone else there. When you got a screen up top or off to the side, and you were like, okay, I'm going to have a clear angle for a quick pull up here. If I go right to the screen and pull up, Nothing. the defender can't recover that quickly. Nope. Someone would be there. When you went up to reach for a rebound, it was never clean. There was always someone there. When you went to bring it up over half court, you had an escort, and then there was also a valet waiting for you if you even made it past half court cleanly. And when you stopped with the ball, you were dead. When you're watching the wolf swarm, I don't like comparing. When you picked up your dribble, you were dead. <laughs> And, and I, I, see, I and, and I won't I won't compare the Knicks. I'm gonna let you go, brother. I'm, but I won't compare the Knicks to the Minnesota Timberwolves. But we lock in on defense the same way. We lock in on defense the same way. We have some of the same similar, uh, you know, versatile guys on the wings. It's just that that three headed monster that they have down there. Them three bigs that they could throw at Joker with Gobert, Cat, and Nas Reed is not something that we particularly have. We got three bigs, but I don't we don't have three bigs that can do what those three bigs do. So um I expect a win tonight. I expect to go back to Indiana up 2-0. Um oh, well, no, no, we, we can come keep keep with the uh... The Timberwolves thing, because I'll just chop it up as a Timberwolves topic. We'll see how it does on the other channel. That's what we do out here, trying to show you how to make money on his YouTube thing. Heard you. Care. Heard you. Um, stick. But the reason why I don't even think you understand how that Ravens team, for me, well, I used to play Madden back then. You, I played. I picked them before they won. I'm, I'm I smoked everybody. Mm -hmm. Yo, I could throw this. I, you're done. I used to know how to run. Like if you threw a, if you were throwing, if you had somebody. I throw somebody on the line of scrimmage. I used to press run. It was McCall McAllister was a cornerback because Ed Reed wasn't there yet. Ed wasn't there. That's too early. McAllister, and I forgot who the other uh, cornerback was. Rod Woodson was there as our safety. That's why I give. I was a big Dion fan, but I don't like. I don't like to let people overlook Rod Woodson. How he went from cornerback to 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 the backfield to the other level and in, in the secondary as a safety and became one of the top safeties for the Ravens and the Raiders. Rod Woodson's back there. That front seven is crazy. You don't understand how much that Ravens team meant to me. So when you said that, I was like, what's Russillo doing? And even he said it. Everything he said, I thought, by the way, also, I love Ryan Russillo. I do. Like, everything I do. about that, when you said it, I was like, oh, Flea loves me. Yeah. But that's my guy. <laughs> that's my guy. I like, I like Ryan. Um, I've always liked Ryan. He's a bug out, too. He's a bug out. <laughs> He's a bug out. <laughs> but, I thought uh, there was some uh, beef with him and um, Van Lathan. I thought there was like a I don't know if it was a you know white and black thing, but uh I don't I I'm not I'm not familiar with any back and forth between them. Um, no, at all. And they just did a, a piece on Deion Sanders that's like I want to watch that on here. I hmm. cause I wasn't aware of Deion's beefing with people online, like different players. Like they get into a deep dive, like Van Lathan's like, bro, after that first couple games, they were done in Colorado. Y'all just weren't watching college college football. He said, once I knew Bill Simmons bought in, I knew it was over for Colorado <laughs> and then Deion Sanders because you're a casual guy. You don't yeah. watch college football. Everything yeah. about that was dope. And to see him and, and Ryan Russillo break down. Ryan Russillo was a student of any game. He All his breakdowns are crazy. He's a, see, 
that was my point with JJ Reddick before too. There ain't no difference between like if you break down JJ Reddick and Ryan Russillo. If you ask me who's better at breaking the game down, JJ Reddick ain't messing with Ryan Russillo, in my opinion. In my opinion, Ryan Russillo has zero bias, zero, and he catches a lot of flack, a lot for his his stances. That's why I really like that guy. I like the guys that take a chance. Someone like Jason Whitlock that nobody likes right now. He's the guy that was really talking about Deion Sanders, and it made you feel like, is Deion that bad? So I, I got to go find somebody else to go. And Van Lathan spoke on it like, this is it's going down in Colorado. And then Ryan Russillo spoke on it, and I'm like, okay. Because that's the guy who I know. Ryan Russillo is going to tell me what, like it is, how it is, and I would like to believe that's how I am with a little, you know, New York flavor. Um, But this breakdown was crazy because I would have thought the 2001 Tampa Bay Buccaneers were more like this Minnesota team because you're not allowed to play as physical as a, as a Timberwolves. But then I rewatched game two. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. It's the switch from, all right, you could switch on defense. They're switching from like, I don't know how you how you call You could break it down better for me, Flea. They're switching from like one wing. will go from one wing to the corner where the guy just, the defender, Switched off to the to the top of the to the like they say the right wing. Somebody on the left wing is running to the corner to the right corner that just that was the defender just left. What I'm watching is like, oh, this is football. They they swarm. Their rotations are so unorthodox. Like their rotations are super duper unorthodox, man. It's uh, it's it's beautiful to watch. I believe they're about to announce the MVP. Hmm. Oh, TNT just opened up. It's yeah. talking Brunson. Yeah. Let me know what they said. We're we going to use that for, uh, for tomorrow, serious cash. Right yeah. on cue. Pun yeah. intended, serious cash. They look like um, they announced the MVP. Yeah, but that, that Ravens team means the world to me. Uh, and I guess as far as game two is concerned with the Pacers, I think we spoke on that. I don't think uh, we we're as intense as the Timberwolves. I think their personnel is different. And they, they, they got a lot of young Thundercats over there that fly around, that are athletic, long. Like they have some, they have one, two, three, four guys that are like long, athletic, can switch one through four. Like, like I said, some of their rotations just seem so unorthodox. It's like you shouldn't even be able to get to that spot, but you got there. How the hell did you get there, uh, Alexander Walker? Or how the hell did you get there, McDaniels? How? They got Kyle Anderson playing defense. Slow-mo. Slow-mo is out there defending, moving the puppies. Like Nas Reed, they're all clamping up uh, Joker for as long as possible. Uh, that we, we spoke ad nauseum about um, go the gold bird trade and how Minnesota won that. Clearly, in my opinion, at this point, they tilted, they got the, the culture, everything. But the one that's overlooked is the Lakers and Minnesota trade. That's where they got the kid that you just mentioned. Again, we walk, we, we working over here in uh with intuition. We like Professor X out here. We work me and me and Fleet talk to each other with, with through the minds. Mike Conley and uh Alexander Walker and picks they got from with a combination of Utah and the Lakers, that trade is now super underrated because you got Mike Conley to run the point guard and, and take point guard duties. They had slow-mo bringing the ball up. I saw Nas Reed bringing the ball up. And it was somebody else that surprised me who brought the ball up. But this guy, Alexander Walker, could bring the ball up. Alexander Walker, Nas Reed, McDaniels, Conley, of course, uh, Ant-Man. Bro, to make Ant-Man basically, in my opinion... At times, your third or fourth best defensive player, because of the likes of Alexander Walker, they was like you talk about bothering and getting into the, uh, Murray's head. This is why, they, like, what's his name, Conley, the GM? Oh, 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 uh, Tim Connolly. Tim Connolly. This is masterful, bro. We, bro we're talking he, about he built sweeping Denver. the champions. He built Denver, and in that, and now built Minnesota to beat Denver. Oh, oh, boy, oh, TV. Oh, they scared, but I'm not. They don't like commentario. Isus Cribes.